Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today I am talking with Centered Tarnished. So uh, I've been I've been writing a script um, with a sort of psychological bent um, on Elden Ring, and I came across uh, Centered Tarnished videos, and I was just blown away because uh, you were saying certain things that were almost like word for word what was in my script. So I was like, okay, I, I got to talk to this guy. Um, <laughs> uh, I got to see where we are, how uh, simpatico we are on things. So yeah, really excited to have this conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited as well. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. And um, it's nice to, to chat with somebody who's also interested in, in the psychological aspect of it, because I think, I think more and more people are, are kind of, um, getting on board with, you know, that, that side of things. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have the chat with you. Yeah. So I guess maybe that's a good place to start is, um, you know, the, a lot of the lore hunting community, I suppose is, is focused on, how do I put this? Like the, the facts of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and I, I, you know, I've tried to get down into something, something deeper, some, some, you know, the mm -hmm. themes or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, of course I, I also get sucked into just, oh, I wonder what, who, who this is and, and what happened here and, and all, all the sort of the details. But, but I think, um, yeah, I, I, I guess there's probably places where we disagree, but um, oh, sure. I think I think one place where we might agree that I don't think um, uh, everyone does on this, but I I'd be curious if, if this is true. Um, I think we both agree that the story is really about America in a way that yeah. it's like that she is the character that the story is about, that everything in the story is some way of informing about her is that is that fair yeah yeah i i definitely agree with that i i feel like america is kind of the subject of this almost psychological analysis if you will um like when i am playing the game i can almost see her sitting across from like a therapist or you know, you see, the story very much is about her her experiences and I think that the way that it's playing out is on this grander scale of of the Elden Ring world right um I feel like what's what's happening in her from an individual standpoint in her life is being reflected to to the outside world so yes I very very much agree with that so how did wh what was your experience when you when you started playing the game, like how, how did you come to this perspective? How did you start focusing on the psychological a aspect? Um, basically just stumbled into it. If I'm being completely honest, um, I've been playing, you know, souls games since demon souls. So over a decade now, um, and I've always been fascinated with, you know, the lore, of them, um, but I kind of just let other people do the work, you know, Epic Name Bro and, and those characters from, from, you know, the OGs back in the day. And I just kind of like took them at their word. Um, and I always thought like, oh, it'd be really cool if, if I could do this, but other people are doing it. They seem to be doing a really good job. So I'm not really gonna even try. Um, Elden Ring came along and I kind of just gained the courage to take a shot at it, honestly, but I had nowhere to start that was unique because i think um there's a lot of really good people that are just taking item descriptions and like the the very factual things in the game and coming up with the story for people um and then i think that there's a different side of, of it kind of like you know seems like you're you're trying to um get to that part as well it's like the deeper meaning the more um metaphorical meaning um and the whole america's radigan um, the, the, the constant theme of like this kind of split in identities, um, this, this opposite opposites kind of within ourselves, the yin and yang, all this different type of stuff. I literally just 
put it into a Google search. Um, I think the very first thing that I stumbled upon was called The Runes of the Unconscious um, by Carl Jung in um, that like 45 minute video very much struck me in, in not just Elden Ring, but a lot of Miyazaki's creations, you know, like, for example, Bloodborne literally has this character, Carol Runes, where at a memory altar, you, you etch a rune into your mind. Um, and, and where it happens is all bloody, like it's very meant, you know, it's a very psychological thing, in my opinion, that is happening within Bloodborne. Um, and these runes are, you know, they're, they're from these gods that nobody knows what they're saying. And, and that's very much how Carl Jung explains the unconscious is like, you know, he, he, he makes it seem like it's this deity or this figure that is kind of unknown. Um, and the way it communicates is through these runes of, of gibberish almost. And only through active imagination and, and all this type of stuff can you actually understand what it's saying. Um, so, you know, that that kind of was the the crux of it, the very beginning of, of my dive into psychology. And then I found things like the anima and animus and, and the structure of of um, of the psyche and, and all this different type of stuff. And it just, in my opinion, very much lined up with the the story being told in the game um, and kind of what what just a, a normal person experiences through their psychological development during their, their lifespan. Um, and it just, everything just very much seemed to line up um, the different stages of the animus as reflected in the Elden Lords and all this stuff. So I, every step and every book I read and every kind of article I read and every YouTube video I read was just like, Hmm, that's, that's it kind just, of it spookily. Fits. Yeah. It just fits so well. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, that's kind of how it started. It, and now I think I'm very much, um, I wouldn't say that I'm looking for it, but it's hard not to see that. So um, in the beginning, it wasn't that at all. Like I just, it just fit very naturally. And, and that's kind of how I, I ended up where I'm at. Yeah, that's interesting. I, so you mentioned that you, you've been playing since, since the beginning, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. well, some people will claim that the beginning is really like Kingsfield, but, um, but, uh, but at <laughs> sure. least with, with, uh, with demon souls, like, because it, yeah. it does seem to me like Elden Ring, it's obviously an evolution of that, of that line of, of games, but mm -hmm. that story-wise it is doing something, I don't know, maybe different or, or at least much more so in this yeah. kind of direction of of having this like uh parable quality to it where it's sort of it's yeah. telling you something that because you know, demon souls i mean there's a lot of interesting ideas there and um i mean you do have stuff about you always in all of them you have this stuff about like the mind and mm -hmm conception and consciousness and, and, and this sort of thing. That's sort of the whole premise. Mm. But in terms of, but, but it's all like within the world of the story. It's, it's not really like, I don't know. I never really got the impression. Maybe you yeah. disagree with, with demon souls and dark souls that it was, um, communicating s that, that the characters in the in the events were sort of representing something beyond um what was happening in the story exactly the, the, i don't know does that make sense yeah i think that makes sense like I, I think what i'm gathering is like basically the there was a lot of themes of it back you know from demons dark souls um to me i feel like it changed almost to the central focus where yeah, it's more of like a, a character analysis of of somebody or a psychological analysis of somebody to me in Bloodborne. Um, I feel like Bloodborne was almost Miyazaki's like, you know, he's he's kind of dipping his toes into it um, because obviously there's the 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 artistic direction and even the 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 names of, you know, the enemies and things like that. Um, insight and eyes inside of your mind, all this different type of stuff. I, I feel like he turned the knobs. Mm -hmm, yeah. On that, it's all about dreams. That a lot. And, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's all a dream, and and you know, Queen Yarnum it, to me very much is is a similar story to America, but with it's still not to me. America is like I feel like he found his kind of passion, and I think a lot of it has to do with um, you know I am now a father. You know m my uh, my psychological development in the past five years from college to being a father to kind of you know being in a business setting and things like that. Like, I think that, I think that that reflects Miyazaki's journey as well, where he is starting to um, develop psychologically in, in so many different ways. And, and um, I feel like the, the games are, are being reflected in his own, his own psychological journey as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I totally agree that it, it seemed, it seemed to be an interest of his, um back in demons dark souls and then it seemed to to flip to kind of his in my opinion at least um the way that he tells stories now well i mean just just taking that like the idea of the theme of parents and children let's say like in demon mm -hmm. souls you have ostrava but yeah mm -hmm. i don't know there isn't there isn't much to that like okay there's kind of a maybe a sad story um it's not really like the central focus of the game and then yeah. you have Gwendolyn and that's maybe a little more complex in in Dark Souls yeah. um and then and then yeah by the time you get to Bloodborne it's like it's all about it's all about a, a, you know having children essentially um and then yeah. and then Elden Ring is like well that's the entire plot of of the of the game right. is is about this this woman and her children um, so yeah, that, it is interesting to see that, that development. Um, you mentioned Queen Yarnum, and, uh, I did want to pick up on this cause you have some interesting theories about, uh, about America and see the, the thing that I, that I've been struggling with is yeah. where, where, where I started from with the psychological angle is like, okay. It seems to me like Elden Ring is really trying to say something about America. And may maybe there's mm -hmm. some little th um, throwaway stories that aren't really connected that much. Maybe it's, it's just sort of world building. But but like mostly everything is, all the, all the major stuff is about her in some way. And yeah. this all kind of points to something missing. Like there's the... If I'm trying to put all the pieces together, there's like this big hole where there should be there should be a chapter of the story, which is about like basically the 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 impetus, the instigation for everything that's happened. This should be uh, <laughs> like just logically, what's missing is there should be some terrible thing that happened in America's yeah. past. Like that's just, that just yeah. seems to be where everything sort of converges on, and it's just like this blank yeah. space where that is, and I, yeah. I I'm not getting anything there. Um, yeah. And so I don't know. Yeah. What What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I, I I totally agree. Um, and and I actually think that the clues are there. Um, I think that they are very subtle, and uh, you know, I don't. People probably aren't very familiar with my my channel and my, my videos and things like that. But I've had a couple of different live streams and a couple of different just kind of lore videos where I go into what I believe happened to America, kind of like you're saying, like this giant gap of, well, why is she doing this? Like what is happening? What happened to her in her past that, that made her do this and, and the psychological um, implications of it and stuff like that. And, you know, we on my channel, we kind of, came to the conclusion based off of environmental clues and, and the different themes that America lost a child. Um, and it seemed that she lost a child um, kind of while I was still in the womb. It was either um, that to me, there, there is two possible explanations. Um, there's this, there's this um, in, in a very real life, situation when when somebody has twins there's this um there's a lot of complications that can that can be associated with it one of those things is where the umbilical cords get tangled up 
Um, and you, you have to, the mother has to make a terrible decision of basically sacrificing one of the twins, removing it from the womb. So that way the other twin can live. Um, so that's to me when I, when I see, and I have, I have a video of it, this is only a couple minutes long, but, um, the, the Erd tree and the shadow tree, um, kind of in the shadowlands, very much one is twisted around and, and like squeezing the life out of the other one. Um, and can I, can I just point out that, on, on that point yeah. that there yep. is a, <clears throat> sorry, there is a, um, a talisman, which is cut from the game, which is called yeah. entwining umbilical cord, which, yeah. which changes your, your sort of your, uh, animations to be the, that of the opposite sex. So yeah. that's kind of yeah. interesting. <laughs> Super interesting. Yeah. And I didn't know that until somebody on my discord, um, actually pointed that out and I was like, holy shit, are you serious? <laughs> like that's, that's crazy. Um, and, and I think, you know, a lot of people with cut content and things like that, you know, it's, it, it's hard to take at face value, but I think what, what happens is that Miyazaki paints a full picture for him and his team. So that way everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like everybody is like, this is the story that's happening. Now let's remove clues, right? Let's, let's make the dots that need to be connected further away, you know, more abstract, more, um, you know, tougher to connect basically. And, and I think that that is what is happening and, and why it's so hard to, to make these connections. But, um, and, and that's kind of, how I, that's what I think, sorry, that's what I think happened to America. Um, something well, very I, complicated in, in her, you know, I, I in her pregnancy. What, made... what, what, when you said that, um, because in your video, you, you said that like, oh yeah, she had a, uh, you know, still, stillbirth essentially. Um, yeah. that, um, that my first reaction was like, I've never heard that before. Uh, second, yeah. I have no idea like how exactly what, how I would support that idea with, with sure. evidence in the game. And then third, mm -hmm. that like, that makes so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> that just, that just yeah, feels, right. intuitively yeah. that feels like such a Miyazaki, um, yeah. it just makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. and I, I, I have been wondering, I, 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 I this is maybe a little bit um crass to wonder this but given that you mm -hmm. know like Miyazaki he had a son and uh mm -hmm. and you know that that has doubtless uh changed his perspective on things I do also sort mm -hmm. of wonder whether uh his wife miscarried with a daughter because that that would be a very, I mean, it would be in the games, oh, yeah. you know, basically. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and, and you know, um, it's it's not really all that uncommon, especially for first time pregnancies, mm -hmm. um, to 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 go through something like that. Um, and even if it didn't happen to him, um, I, I know people that it's happened to. Actually, I know yeah. several people that it's happened to, and kind of the the repercussions of it, um, you know, and, and the, like the way that I view America is, um, somebody who is, is like this devout, you know, Christian where you're doing all the right things. Um, you're dedicating your life to, to what you think is the right things. And then something like this happens. Um, and where do you, Kind of where do you turn to i can only imagine if if you're that devoted to your your religion um but and, and you feel like you're living your life the way that you're you're meant to and you're doing all the right things and you know you are you are repressing certain aspects of yourself and and only trying to be good um and then this happens to you it it, it must just flip your entire world view and your values on its head Right. Mm. Um, and, and to me, that is, that's kind of the, the crux of, of her and the story. Um, and, and like I said, I think that there's tons of themes of child loss. Um, and, and when it's, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like 
you know, it, like you're saying, like it, it fits so well and it explains the story that Ben trying to find the evidence for it seems, it seems a lot easier because you're kind of looking for it, which is obviously confirmation bias, which is not good. Um, but to me, there, you know, I very much think that the, and a lot of people disagree with this, that the, um, the map is a fetus in a womb. Um, that was like another today. idea that, that, yeah, that you mentioned that. And I thought, oh, wow, that actually makes so much sense as well. Because, you know, one way to look at it is like, okay, well, it's, it's a broken ring, right? And that's kind of, uh, yeah. uh, that's the, the, maybe the more obvious one. But, um, right. but then that image of the fetus, like we also see that it's like, that's the silver tears. That's, um, Selen's primal mm -hmm. glintstone. Like that yep. idea is, is all over the place. So that, right. that also makes a lot of sense. Right. And, and Ronnie's tower is, you know, there's a, a the only tower that just has a dead body, um, would be the umbilical cord and, um, you know, the, the rune of the, the unborn and it, there's, there's just, there's just so much. Um, and, and like, you know, my latest video, I tried to explain that there's, there's, that the, the story is being told to us through so many different, um, kind of lenses like there's a there's a a giant you know where elden ring is is on you know a cause you know is is a, a, a proportions of you know the universe where it's like if you try to plug it into an individual like america it doesn't make sense but then i i feel like this the stories are being told to us over and over just on these different scales um, yeah and yeah. i think that i think that that is that I feel like if if wrapping your head around that and not trying to to connect you know x to to y but realizing that x and y are the same story just being told to us through different scales um, really helps kind of clear things up and and just to kind of go back on on this child loss um, you know the the harpy thing about not being able to birth children and um, you know are clutching a, a child and obviously now with the dlc um trailer we see that in mesmer's room there's merica holding a child like so many different things are are telling us this story it's just about putting them all together and and making a giant a, a whole picture out of it um and i think that that's kind of how i came to the conclusion even before the dlc trailer dropped that like Okay, America lost a child, and I don't know if we're ever going to see this child, but we'll probably get the story of that back in the Shadowlands. And it seems that Mesmir is that that sacrificed child, um, and I'm really excited to see where the DLC goes. Yeah, in, that's in that, that, story. that is kind of a spot on prediction there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, no, but I, so I mean, I wanted to pick up on a couple things. One is um, mm -hmm. what you were saying about how these stories are being told on multiple levels like yeah. back in the dark souls days um miyazaki i think it's the design works interview miyazaki in an interview he talked about like what his process was for for building the story and and basically he said like well he would just constantly talk about themes essentially to 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 all the the everybody on the team and he you know it's yeah. themes of death and darkness and and of like this city of the gods and light and all this stuff and then there's like the hell demonic kind of stuff um and then that's sort of like the the world just starts because everybody is is kind of contributing right like there's the 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 enemy designers and, and the concept artists and like everybody's doing different things and Miyazaki's not just dictating what everybody should do, but he's talking about these ideas. And so sometimes that idea gets expressed in one way because that's how someone decides to represent it. And sometimes it gets expressed right. in a completely different way. And then, you know, yeah. ultimately he's, he's like putting in the item descriptions and kind of connecting everything through that and, and so it is. It is this kind of amalgamation of uh, of different people, kind of representing 
the same themes, the same story elements in different ways. So it does end up being like, yeah, there's this overarching story of, I mean, one example would be like all the adopted daughters um, in, in Elden Ring. There's all these cases of adopted daughters and it's mm -hmm. like, well, they're all yeah. different stories, but clearly that was, that was like, you know, at some point Miyazaki was, was talking about that. Right. And so people started to put that together and, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I totally agree, and I think um, it, it, that that's why it's really important to. It's important the, the the item descriptions and kind of the the real historical um, value of the game is is incredibly important, but you also have to have kind of the more esoteric, deeper, you know, like like you're saying, like the conversations that. Um, that started that that created the game, right? Like, what were those conversations? Um, because there are real people, right, that are putting these these games together, and it's it's real experiences that are just being expressed um, in in these different ways. So, what were those conversations? You know, right? Like, why is why are these adopted daughters um, such a such a sticking point for Miyazaki um, that are being expressed in, in different ways. And um, that's why I think a lot of the, you know, we're two years plus into the game and I feel like we've got a good handle on the item descriptions and kind of the, um, I, I wouldn't even say we have a really good handle on, on like the, the history of the lanes between and, no. and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and that just to me is screaming like, well, that because we're missing a giant piece of the puzzle, which is it doesn't necessarily need to be psychology. Um, I think it is, but um, you know, I, I feel like there's a there's a esoteric component of it that is missing that would be kind of like the fabric of everything, um, where the the item descriptions and and um, the the actual history of the lands between plus this this deeper hidden meaning, all of it together paints a full picture. Um, and I feel like currently we're at this state where it seems like we're just kind of beating our heads against the wall of regurgitating item descriptions and, and still like trying to make sense of it in a very um, uh, like linear. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a, like, like the grounded lesson, story. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And I feel like um, that's just not how Miyazaki or George R. R. Martin really operate um so yeah yeah well there there is always the george R. R. martin component and we still don't really know mm -hmm. what was going on there although i mean it it is odd some people will claim that like he wasn't that involved um but then you know we have interviews where um you know i think miyazaki said something about like basically it, revealing that martin had come up with characters like Godric and Rikard and and all these people and yeah. um but on the on the broader sort of perspective on on the story but my I, I've been trying to kind of step back a little bit more to to get a better understanding and I think mm -hmm. one of the things which I which I realized is like at first it seems like we're given this story which basically spans from like the beginning of time to the present, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, actually there, there's a bit of a parallel here with dark souls, how we also seem to get that, that kind of story. And then it turns out that there's a whole bunch of stuff that happened in the past, right. um, that we never heard about. Um, but, but <laughs> I, I think the, what I realized is that like, no, this, this story, like most of that's, past history is is i i think it's part of miyazaki's like big story like it, it all means something it's not just random um but yeah. most of that in terms of what the base game presents is more of flavor and background and the story that the game is really focused on is like the shattering and this this mm -hmm. uh clash of of children you know for um uh, for the throne that's like where 
in terms of the plot, at least, that's that's where things are are focused on. And so all this stuff in the past, it just isn't given that much room to breathe. And mm -hmm. and so when you look at, at America, it's like, well, we have all this information about... <laughs> It's a certain type of information, maybe not the clearest, but like, okay, she's Radigan, she has these children, she wants to kill a god, all all this stuff for the, the present moment. And then when you try to piece it all together, it just, it seems like there's this, well, okay, but why? <laughs> why why did right. this start to happen? Like, why yeah. why is everything so messed up? And I think from that angle, um, you need some you need something major to have happened to her. Um, right. So whether, I mean, whether it's a, you know, a miscarriage or, or something else, but like, I, I don't think her story makes sense unless there's some major thing that we don't hear about. And, and so the, I mean, the, the, to me, the miscarriage, I, I still haven't, um, I still haven't fully, uh, absorbed that and, and thought it through. So I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm completely yeah. convinced, but just, you yeah. know, it yeah. passes the sniff test, I'd say. Um, <laughs> so that's, and to, I, to be fair, that, that may be all that you, <laughs> we get with Miyazaki. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, I think even after the DLC, he's not going to be like, you know, wrapping up a book and being like in America had a miscarriage and that's why. Right. I, oh, sure. Yeah. And, oh no. And he's, and he's not going to give us, um, the, give us the answers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm almost I'm almost in the camp of like after the DLC it's gonna be even more confusing. Um <laughs> especially especially if we go in not even understanding kind of the base game. Like um and I think that he said in, in his in one of his um interviews that he was like he's trying to make the lore more digestible um and a little bit more attainable and he feels like he's they still kind of missed the mark and they still need to work on that. So um to me that just that means like uh there's a lot of missing pieces out there that nobody's put together and and it's it's a it's an issue that he's still trying to figure out kind of that balance of breadcrumbs um that just don't lead you right to like the the end of it because if we figured out his lore from day one nobody would be talking about this nobody would be playing the you know we might still be playing the game but um the the real you know, the bread and butter that, that he does so well is he gives us just enough and then takes away and rubs out and, you know, points, you know, one way signs in different directions and like just gets us all sorts of disoriented. But, um, oh yeah, no, I, I yeah, I, my, I, I think that Miyazaki essentially invented a new type of game, right? Cause there's, right. there's the game yeah. that you play and then there's the game that you, that everybody is still playing two years out, you know, which is yeah. whether whether or not you're yeah. actually playing Elden Ring like on the yeah. uh, on the computer or whatever. Um, yeah. The game of of finding out the lore and like trying to come up with theories and stuff. This is a whole nother game. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, hundred percent. I totally agree. Yeah. It's very yeah. inventive with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We are very much on the hunt for for the lore, and I think that. I think that it's it's very meta. Like I think he's he knows that that's going to happen, and he just he messes with us constantly. I think so. Um, but but I agree with with kind of like what you're saying. Like the story, and and you know, and a lot of my comments, I have a lot of positive comments. Um, a lot of people like you're kind of saying like I haven't thought about that, but it makes a lot of sense. And then I also have people that will comment of, um, like you know, basically that <laughs> this is all crazy and that. Um, it's much more simple than that, but but when you simplify um, the story, you if if you don't ask yourself the question of well why would somebody do that, then the story might make sense to you. But if you even ask that for some of the more simpler um, events in the game, you, there doesn't seem to be a reason, right? Like, well, why would they do that? Why would X, you know, why would this happen? And it, and it, it very much starts to break down. And and I agree that there. There is this missing catalyst um, that sparked all of this stuff because before it seems like, you know, the the lanes between and America and was very much just kind of going through a very normal kind of progression of of 
psychological development or personal development or however you want to think about it. And then kind of shit hit the fan, something happened and the world, her inner world and thus the outer world, the lands between um, are very much not what they used to be. And yeah, that's, that seems to, seems to be hopefully where we're going back to in the Shadowlands, because I think even with that three minute trailer or whatever it was, um, we get so much information in there that, that, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very eager to see what happens. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm, I'm fairly optimistic in a certain respect. Like I, I actually, I hope that it will leave us confused for, for years to come because that, that's just yeah, more, that's more fun. Yeah. But, but at the same time, yeah. like, I think it seems to be dealing with things of the past and it seems to be dealing with America mm -hmm. specifically and yep. and given the the scope of it I I just I don't see how we're at least going to get a lot more a lot more clues to play with you know so yeah, um, yeah. so I'm I'm pretty optimistic about that I I initially yeah. I I had thought before we saw anything about the DLC I I thought no they they're, they're going to pull a a ringed city and just like throw in some completely random thing that nobody ever heard about or but yeah. but it does seem like it, it this time it's a bit more um integrated and that that may also yeah. have to do with the George R R Martin involvement if if you know they're also basing this off of his initial document um yeah yeah. At least in part. Yeah, and I, I, I think um, I very much get the sense, and I, you know, I don't know for sure. I, I don't really read interviews or anything like that back in the Dark Souls days. Um, but I very much get the sense that like Dark Souls two and three, um, and kind of the the DLCs and and the the added stories was not part of the original plan for Miyazaki. Like they almost got caught off guard by the success of it, and. Um, we're almost pressured into kind of just just continuing to pump out, you know, um, DLCs and and uh, successors and and things like that. And yeah, I, because a lot of people, when you when you mention Mesmir, you know, and you're like, well, why was he never mentioned? Um, and and a lot of people will bring up, well, yeah, we saw that in the Ring City, um, so this is nothing new. But it's like, well, I. I kind of disagree because I, I feel like the story that Miyazaki wanted to be told was was pretty much told in Dark Souls 1. And then, you know, all of these different iterations and, and um, add-ons and DLCs were, were, they were trying to kind of, I don't want to just say like fill in the gaps, but they were trying to tell a story that they already thought was more or less complete and make it interesting and, and stuff and, and just kind of threw in like random things that were never talked about, but still kind of made sense and, and fit the themes and stuff like that. And um, to me, you know, the reason that I think Mesmir was never mentioned is because he never made it right. Like he was just kind of, he's stuck in the Shadowlands because that's where he was born, quote unquote born and, and things like that. And um, like we knew straight off the bat in Dark Souls 1 that there was this missing, you know, the first son of, of Gwyn and, and things like that. And I think that if, if Mesmir was this super important character that helped in wars or, you know, was um, a child of America's that was so blasphemous that she hid away or whatever it was, I think that there would be some sort of slight clue in the base game um, to point us in that direction. And it seems like there wasn't. So uh, that's kind of the my take on on Mesmir plus like, I don't want to say defending my stance, but just kind of putting into context, like, you know, Dark Souls 3 might not have been uh, planned or the original plan for for the whole game. So, um, well, yeah, that's, Dark, that's yeah, Dark of, Souls um, 3 had probably the craziest development. <laughs> or just, if you, if you look at stuff about... Um, like the the alpha beta versions of that it's just completely different completely different story completely yeah. different game all the characters are different uh people are in different places and it's a completely different idea um 
uh, it's actually, I, I went down a, a big rabbit hole of, of like the development history of that. And it's amazing how much that game makes sense considering how much changed. Cause I mean, if you think El Elden Ring, like we have some weird cut content where like Morgoth is Elden Lord mm -hmm. and, and who knows what that, what, what's going on there. But, but like compared to Dark Souls yeah. three, that's nothing. So that's, yeah. And in, and maybe in some ways Ring City actually is closer to Miyazaki's original plan for for how that game was mm -hmm. going to go and there was stuff with with Bandai and they wanted to leave it yeah. open for sequels but as you said I think it, a lot of it was like he made Dark Souls and and that was like that was the story that was the story he wanted to tell and then they kept on making yeah. them and and even Dark Souls 3 and Ratatoskr has a great uh, video about this that like basically the point of Dark Souls 3 is like let it die <laughs> let, <laughs> let me make another game you know um, yeah, enough, the, enough. the painted world and all this stuff is like yeah, just just let yeah. it burn like we're okay we yeah. can go on yeah. to another IP um, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but I, I did want to say That's something funny. about um, you know you said like oh people will call you crazy or something I, I, I was thinking mm -hmm. like there's there's sort of two ways you can look at at Elden Ring, um, and and w with any of the Miyazaki stories is like one of them is is like a science fiction world essentially where you're trying to figure out like okay this these are the rules of how the universe works and this is the yeah. plot and these are the characters and this is what they did and this is how magic works and and okay blah 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 uh, and the other way is more like you're reading. Uh, like a Greek myth or something, or like a religious story, mm. where it's not quite, it's not really about the the facts, it's more about like, well, what is, why is this story being told? It's more about the yeah. why than the what, if that makes sense. And um, yeah. I yeah. I feel like that's, I you, well, you probably go too far in either direction, but, but I feel like that is much more, um, Miyazaki what Miyazaki intended I think he starts from metaphors he starts with these metaphors mm -hmm. of you know the like, eyes are the windows to the soul right like that's the and and then it's yeah. like oh well yes they actually are <laughs> in his in his, right. in his world and that's it's it's right. telling you something is so what someone someone's eyes uh you know the way their eyes look and, and what they can see and if they're blindfolded this tells you something much deeper yeah. than just like it's not just a matter of um, uh, eyes are magical and this is how the magic works in terms of like the rules right. of the universe. It's it's something more about um, what what you're meant to take away as a as a reader as an audience member is is something more. It's more like a parable, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I totally agree, and I and like kind of like I said, this this whole psychological um wearing the you know the the glasses that lets me kind of view this this the story in a psychological sense um it seems it's it's a much more full digestible story at least to me um when when you kind of like you're saying like everything's kind of a metaphor and it, it all has meaning and um you know and and Miyazaki has been telling the story of balance and you know and, and obviously that's that's a very um japanese culture of of balance and and um tao and, and yin and yang and all this different type of stuff and um that seems to be kind of what is he's trying to portray and again like it's being told on so many different scales but it's all kind of kind of the same story like um i think another thing that that I have been talking about for, you know, 18 months or something like that is the, the unbalance of, of America and of her kind of ideology and, and her values and things like that. And it's, it's being reflected in her hair and her hairstyle. Um, and hmm, uh, the missing ponytail. And, yeah. I mean, her earlier, you know, the, the ones that bring you the statues of America where they bring you back to life. And, you know, she's very much in that, that 
earlier part of her her developmental process where she's super unbalanced and and only about about her values and her ideology she has one braid on on one side and then when she's kind of in her crucified um pose you know the the bigger statues she has a half braid on her other side and um you know it to me it's 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 only a matter of time before we see both braids on or one long braid on you know down down her back or something like that where it's like all of these tiny little details of of even statues and and of the environment and the sounds you hear um when you're at certain places like they're all very much communicating um a story um and and you know it's even it gets granular even to that level um at least in my opinion yeah no i think that's right i mean and again if you just imagine how how this how these elements might make their way into the game um like if someone's the the an environmental artist and they're making assets mm -hmm. for you know what america statues like well Miyazaki's probably going to be talking with them and and you know telling them well this is what America is about and this is what yeah. when in the in the history of the world this is going to happen um so all of those ideas would be front of mind for them I think yeah um, yeah I, I I agree and and kind of going back to what you said as far as um you know why uh instead of uh instead of what um one of my when i first started kind of thinking about the game especially through the psychological kind of vantage point um i kept asking myself like why is godfrey in this game um to me you could have just had radigan do all of this stuff um like he, there doesn't seem to really be a reason for godfrey like if he's just going to get hounded and then brought back and then we kill him right um seems like everything that he did radigan could have easily done and it would have eliminated you know some work on on the developmental side and, and things like that but so then there must be there must be a reason that fits into the bigger picture um and i don't know if you're familiar with my videos or, or anything like that but i have this um the elden lord video where there's four different stages of of the Elden Lord, uh, or of of a woman's animus, her you know male counterpart, as the woman develops and grows and you know matures, so does so does this male counterpart that lives psychologically within her. And before I go any further, I should say that I am not you know I don't study this stuff. Um, so there's people in my Discord that are are way more knowledgeable about the, the super deep. Um, depth psychology and, and things like that and I very much more a layman kind of you know the way I explain it is much more I feel like digestible especially in in the context of of Elden Ring but um, you know the first stage of the of the animus for a woman is it's very singular focused it's all about just physical strength um, and and it goes from physical strength to kind of like this war hero kind of um, uh, prophet type of person, um, uh, a very like a pilgrimage type of type of person. Then it goes into, you know, and, and then down the road and, and finally you go into this final stage where it's like this, this partner who allows you to traverse, you know, your, your conscious and your, your unconscious and, and it, you know, it facilitates you in, in your journey of growing and developing and things like that. And to me, like when I saw that and all of, you know, Godfrey really only has kind of this singular focus about him. Um, and it's just about strength. Like the only thing that warrants a crown is physical strength. Um, and then in that coupled with like, well, why does he even hear, you know, to me, he doesn't really serve a purpose that um, is unique to him. And um, that to me was like another, like one of those moments where it's like, man, this just fits so well. Mm -hmm. And the, the things early on that we hear about Radigan is that he's just a war hero, right? Like 
he he raised he rose through the ranks and became a, a hero and and things like that and um the the third stage is one who kind of breaks through um and and kind of journeys into the unconscious and discovers all these different things and then the final stage is like this all encompassing um hermaphroditic type of person that is fluid and able to tra traverse and in, into the the conscious and, and unconscious and facilitate different things and um it just if all of it just seemed very much to line up with with kind of that that thought process too so um i'm curious to know kind of your thoughts on on godfrey and if because i'm not um i'm not the most knowledgeable and i would say like time descriptions and in, in the history of of the lands between and and you know, in kind of the scholarly sense, like I kind of immediately went into the direction of a metaphorical, esoteric kind of kind of way. So I'm curious to to know your thoughts on on Godfrey and, and his purpose in the game. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I I sort of like uh, one part of my brain when when you say like, well, what is Godfrey doing there? Um, I'm like, well, he's obviously he's part of this story, right? But then at the at the other side of my brain, I am kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah. What is what is what is his purpose? Um, I, I do think like that that thing of being purely about strength. It's also it's broader than just him because that's sort of like the the era of the Crucible that that whole yeah. earlier time period. It is it's more vicious. It's it's there is this kind of transition from. Um, like violence and power and and conflict to something more peaceful and um more about like conjoining things together and mm -hmm. um and so I think to some extent that's sort of just what he represents in that um and I think there's also something important I mean I still don't understand Godfrey. I still don't understand a lot of the things in this game. I think there is something like important this. about about the, the relationship with Sarosh and this idea of mm -hmm. that he's being held in check by a beast. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, and I guess this is more of like a a plot thing. I don't know if Sarosh was part of him somehow. Um, and and got like extracted out of him, um, mm -hmm. because there, you know, you do get like, okay, talking about like Jungian stuff, like we we literally get shadows, right? Shadows, which are these yeah. horrible beasts that uh, that that will uh, kill you if you do the wrong thing, right? I mean, it's like yeah. as as clear a Jungian parallel as you could get. So like, America has in, Malachi in, in in the shadow of the Earth Tree that like literally just houses everything that. America yeah, everything you want to suppress, America. it's all veiled. It's all yeah, it's, uh, all, yeah, yeah. Like it's 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 almost a one to one. Like you know, Miyazaki said that he had a hidden meaning in in the title, and it's like if that's not it, like <laughs> I got I got nothing for you because it's 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 literally just the psychological shadow of of like the whole the whole damn game. But yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, but uh, I mean, just the fact that you have these like beasts, and you know, there's. It's like it's like the beast of darkness from from Berserk. It's like this horrible, uh, you know, it's a horrible black beast that that is called a shadow, um, and there seems to be a kind of weird parallel there with Godfrey and uh, Sarosh. And I'm not really yeah. sure. I'm still not sure what that's meant to say exactly, but yeah. I it doesn't it. That seems to me like that's just like on on a I don't know metaphorical or like poetic level like okay, Sarosh is to Godfrey what Malekith is to America. Even even if if like literally that's not true in terms of how the lore works out, like that it's yeah. meant to be saying something sort of symmetrical there. And yeah, I'm I'm not really sure what, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. I, I think there's something there's something important there. Yeah, I, I I I totally agree, and I think um, I think that there there's a couple things. Um, one is is to me, I think it depends again, like very much on how you look at things like the greater will. So 
Um, just put up a video recently about, you know, kind of my take on the greater will and, and what it what it's representing rather than, you know, the maybe the the factual lore of the game. And to me, it represents so willpower is, is literally defined as like you repress something, um, your, your kind of instincts or your impulses. So that way you kind of get rewarded for it right in in the future so you're repressing your instincts and impulses um basically so you are more uh you're more keen to be accepted by society um you become a little bit more you know civilized and and evolution basically is 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 happening because you are choosing to do certain things that make you more ordered and more structured um and that's literally kind of what we see with with the the shadows and and especially with you know um Sirash and, and with Godfrey is you know Sirash literally sits he kind of in the shadow of Godfrey um constantly suppressing his his impulses and his instincts um and to me the 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 relationship between Godfrey and Sirash is a very healthy relationship that's that one would have with with their shadow with their psychological shadow where it's it's still a part of you like it's mm. um it's it's not something that like America is locked away almost in a different dimension or a different time and, yeah. and ignored and grows and and you know becomes more and more dark and and kind of chaotic as time but it's something that is a part of you and it seems like you can tap into it when you need to like the cut scene with with Sirash and Godfrey where Sirash kind of becomes real um it seems like Godfrey is is able to tap into that darker um aspect of of his nature kind of when he needs to um, in becoming horror it, it goes back. like yeah he he yeah. becomes one yeah, with his of, shadow side and and kind of gives in yeah, to like bloodlust yeah he kind of breathes it in right like um yeah, yeah. He, he he kind of like reabsorbs that that aspect of himself um and that's you know in a psychological sense like that's you you need you definitely need a, a, a shadow right like you you can't just be going doing whatever the hell you want to um, but you still need to have a healthy relationship with it. Um, you need to you need to accept it, and and you know it's part of who you are, and not just cast it away. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of how the, my take on on that is. It's a uh, it's showing us the progression of basically Fair Missoula, the Beastmen, where they operated completely on instincts and impulses. You know they they went from literally eating their own kin to burying them in gold. Um, and they, they the, the item description, um, says, you know, they, they kind of lost that part of themselves of, of their instincts and their impulses. And it seems to coincide with the same time that the greater will and the Elden ring starts, starts making an appearance. And it seems like, you know, very much like our own developmental progression where you kind of, as a child, you go from, <laughs> doing whatever the heck i have a three-year-old son so he does whatever the hell he wants to do like no yeah. <laughs> no shame in it nothing like and then you start to realize like oh well, maybe i shouldn't do this in front of people or i should you know kind of repress this part of myself and and join society if you will um and to me that's very much the story of of how we got from beastmen to you know sirash being the king of beast who is tamed by the first Elven Lord and, and all this different type of stuff. It, it just very much seems to um, thematically all fit with this theme of, of repressing kind of our darker, more chaotic side to, to essentially advance, you know, civilization and, and to, to set up rules and structures and, you know, and, and all this different and religions and, and things like that. And um, again, you know, it, it seems that the the story of the Elden Beast, or sorry, the story of of the Beastmen in Fair Missoula, seem to reflect the story of an individual going from basically, you know, infant toddler to kind of adolescence, like that stage of development where you you operate completely on, on instincts and impulses to 
repressing certain parts of yourself to fit in to becoming more and more accepted and and integrated into society and um you lose and, and maybe maybe not that, just that on the not on, not just on the individual level but like literally evolution of like you know we were once yeah. uh, yeah. you know primates on the veldt and then we sort of were able to become a civilized society and sort of repress those those beastly aspects you know and like yeah, if yeah. you have a if you have a civilization of beast men, like that's that's the first place I go is like, oh well, that's where humans used to be. Uh, we were more beastly, yeah. and then we sort of gained gained intelligence, right? We were we right. were suddenly our eyes were opened, um, right? Right? Yeah. But I, I think I mean even that's... more than the um the the. Sh shadow like that dynamic because that is definitely one of the psychological dynamics i think there's it's not always it doesn't always take the same form in the story and i would just say like for mm -hmm. anyone who is maybe unconvinced about taking the psychological lens um maybe as as far as centered as or, or as far as i <laughs> i would um i i would <laughs> just say like there's so uh so it, if if you study psychology at all or or any kind of psychological tradition like one of the first things is recognizing that um your mind is not like you are not a a solid object uh <laughs> your mm -hmm. your yourself is uh made up of a whole bunch of different components uh that so yeah. like like and and you see this with it with a with a little kid like like they're hungry and then when they're hungry like that's a that's one person and that, <laughs> yeah. that is totally possessing them like the the hunger whatever yes. the hunger thirst like that's completely possessing them and they're a different person when yeah. they're not hungry right it's just a, that's a different mm -hmm. component of them yeah. and and the emotions are like that and yeah. all of these motivational systems are like they're all connected under under a single umbrella, but but there is a discreteness to each of them, um, and that a lot of what we do when we're in civilized society is like repressing the the stronger okay. urges. Like, you know, if I if I'm yeah. if I'm at work and uh, I'm like I'm really hungry, I don't just like go and steal some food from somewhere right? you know, like like a like a, or throw a tantrum or yeah right you know and, yeah i have to just repress yeah. that and like yeah. okay well that's that's not ideal <laughs> you know and then get on yeah. with my day for a while yeah. um yeah. yeah and then when yeah, when you sure. take when you yeah. take that view and you you go to elden ring and like i mean the th the thing that has been bugging me since the beginning with elden ring is like what an incredible focus there is on identity overall because yeah it's yeah. it's so strange. I mean, like the the main thing being that like Mer uh, Radigan is Merica. Like, what what the heck? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's fine. You know? <laughs> what? <laughs> and yeah. and then and then you you have you know the D twins and you have all these like spirits yeah. that pop up and reflections and twins and all. just there's so much stuff. Mm -hmm. The entire story is filled with this like confusion, identity confusion. And, yeah. and so like, to me, that's, if you're at all inclined to, to take the sort of parable view of like, there is a deeper meaning here. It's not just a science fiction story about, about characters and plot. Um, that is the main thing is it's something about identity and, and understanding like the different parts of people. Cause that's literally what yeah. the story is, is different parts of people like Ronnie and Godwin and all these is there different parts of them? Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's that's such a good kind of jumping off point for, in, in my opinion, understanding what the Elden Ring, like the actual physical thing, um, what it is, and and to me that's that's <clears throat> another reason why I got so hung up on on like it seems to represent America's like like her her psyche as a whole right because like you're like you're saying your your example of you know how toddlers act um that doesn't go away um 
we just learn like that's that 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 impulse and um reaction to certain things like still very much lives within within your psyche um you just oh absolutely realize yeah. that you that's just what realize you, when that you get if when you, you get hangry <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah you just realize that like if if you act that out um when you reach a certain age it's no longer like oh you know he's just being a kid it's like okay let's check this person into you know <laughs> yeah. some sort of mental institute and and see what's going on and um and the 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 really cool thing about the Elden Ring when when you start viewing it from the psychological stance is that um the great runes seem to be like these in a psychological sense they're they're called complexes but basically what they are is like they're they are these little bundles of emotion um so you know you have things like blasphemy and you have things like loyalty and um and which which seems to literally um when when the children however you want to look at it you know the 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 children of america seem to end up possessing these now whether you know they were born out of them or they just pick them up off the ground or however you want to think about it um it seems like once they once they harbored these individual runes rather than the elden ring on the totality they seem to be possessed by this very singular kind of focused emotional state um which more or less seems to be what turned them into kind of how we see and interact with them in the base game um and what's really cool is that your ego f from you know a structure standpoint so the ego when it's in what's in when it's intact um and healthy and, and doing what it should be doing it is able to harmonize with all these different complexes and all these different kind of emotional states and, and keeps them all balanced within each other. Um, so you can, you can still have, you know, your hangry phase or, you know, where, you know, like, let's just take Rikard for an example, where blasphemy, right. And, and like taking down the current world order seems very possessed it's something that is possessing him like you can kind of bounce in between these different states and we do it all day long like mm -hmm. you might be having a conversation with somebody and and be really interested and engaged and then you might be you know 20 minutes later get cut off in in traffic and be like a totally different person and then you might go on a date with your wife and be a totally different person but the ego is the one that that harmonizes all these different things and, and keeps everything kind of stable um but throughout our lives um we especially when somebody undergoes a traumatic experience uh you you undergo what is called uh ego death and essentially it's exactly what it what it sounds like where the ego quite literally you can't kill the ego, but it dies. Um, and, and you're basically hitting the reset button on, on your psyche. Um, and what happens is that when that happens, these complexes, they are no longer uh, kind of like these states that you flow in and out of. Like they become very possessive um, because you don't have that, that force that is able to, um, to kind of keep everything harmonized and, and centered and balanced and um to me that when when godwin dies godwin to me is what represents the ego um he was kind of like this golden child that did everything right and and was you know perched atop the capital and when he died um the elden ring shattered and uh these different complexes that were once united and and balanced within a system are now scattered and operating as a like a possessive state of being um and you know the 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 whole the whole theme of of godwin and of uh Mikula seems to be godwin was kind of this the old ego right like the old value system the old ideology and this 
traumatic event happened to America, um, you know, in, in my opinion, it's kind of this, this sacrifice of, of one of her twins so that way the other one could live or, or however you want to think of it, um, shattered her, her world, right? Um, as a parent, I can't imagine something, something that intense not having an effect on basically how you operate moving forward to me like that there would be like a before that instance and then an after that instance mm -hmm. and that would kind of like de define your life um and i would think before and after would look very different in how you choose to spend your time the values you, you it's a, it's almost like a person that like has like a near death experience where they be, they come out of that as a totally different person and the values that they have are totally different and you know, they might have been divisive and standoffish before and they realize like that's such a giant waste of time and, and they move forward with their life um, being much more uh, understanding and, and uh, loving and all that kind of stuff. And that's very, to me, very much the story of Godwin dying and um, basically the progression and kind of the story of Mikola, um literally in a cocoon growing building a new a new tree a new way of thinking a new world order where everything is more united and harmonious and all that kind of stuff and um yeah i just that, wanted that, to yeah that's interesting because because godwin also has this i mean he like he befriends the dragons right and so mm -hmm. it's he's he's got that little bit of like well he's a powerful warrior so there's that there's that kind of connection to the previous era but he's also like trying to unite things and then Mikla is yeah. also this like uniting force of ev everything, all, even the 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 meek and the the small, you know, everything is is welcome under this under this version of things. And then also, mm -hmm. I think Mikla being this, um, I don't know how I how I'd put it, but like the the, the fact that he is a, a prepubescent child. Where it's like mm -hmm. sort of innocence, right? It's like a, yeah. a, a you know, the, a common, at least a common trope. I don't know how how realistic this is in uh, in in the real world, but but in in uh, media and in stories and so on. You know, someone who's experienced a traumatic event, um, they sort of they retreat to some kind of like mm. childlike innocence. That's a, that's a common trope. So this idea of Mikola yep. sort of representing that aspect of America and, and then, and then of, of course that, that focus on, on like, yes, well now everyone will be welcome. We won't, we won't, uh, we'll allow right. the misbegotten in there. You know, we'll allow, yep. we'll allow uh, every even the, the Albinorix, they don't have gold in them. Like it's all, it's all going to be much more peaceful theoretically. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, and I, I again, like um, the the you know, <laughs> kind of recentering on the 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 themes of motherhood and kind of of like something old has to die in order for something new to be born, and like Mikola is literally sitting in a cocoon on on. A pelvic bone which mm -hmm. you know if you just do a google yeah. image of of like what a womb you know what it looks like you know from a from that kind of state it's like it's it's again like a very one-to-one -one, um so that story of letting the old way die so something new can be born um is is very pervasive and um the the thing with kind of jumping back to godfrey as far as you know he represents this this era um you know to me it's like um it it, it 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 seems like that that answer would would make more sense if it was like a totally separate couple like if it was godfrey and jerica mm, yeah, <laughs> or something. yeah yeah i see what you mean, you know what I mean? but that it's so um, close to america but, it should mean something more focused on her right yeah yeah, like it's, it seems to, it's right, exactly. Like it seems to reflect her more than it does him because she is kind of, she remains right uh, in this position. Um, and these different stages of, of Elden Lord where they seem to get 
more and more developed or more and more well-rounded. Um, but she remains this, this kind of constant thing, but is also them <laughs> like, because I, I also have, like, I, I have an issue with if, if America is Radigan, is there anything stopping America from also being basically just the Elden Lords, right? Where, um, the Elden Lords seem to be the, the physical side to her, um, like the, the actual side that interacts with the world, um, that, that leads the wars, that defeats the enemies, that has posters of them everywhere. And, and, um, it seems strange that if Radigan is the only one, um, what, what would make him unique compared to the Elden, El, other Elden Lords? Hmm. That's, that's an interesting, I don't think I've heard that before. <laughs> Um, basically the idea that like, that America is maybe more of almost, uh, just if I sort of escape the, um, plot detail kind of discussion, but it, to say that America is more mm -hmm. of like a spirit, um, yeah. and the, the spirit of her is, is somehow in Godfrey. Uh, or, or, yeah, so use whatever terms you want. That's kind of an interesting yeah. idea. You know, I've, I've been, I've been looking into, um, uh, mystery cults recently, uh, mm. in, in the early, like ancient Greek times, you know, you, you have all like your classic gods and Zeus and Hera and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you had these mystery cults, which were, um, they were basically, they were compatible with the overall sort of pantheistic religion, but, um, it, they were more focused on very specific stories, usually something about, um, like cycles of life and death and rebirth. Um, so the classic mm -hmm. one is like the Eleusinian mysteries, which is about, um, Persephone. Uh, who like embodies spring and and she gets captured, kidnapped by by Hades, and and so it's like it's this story of like winter and spring and the cycle of the seasons, but it's also about mm -hmm. death and rebirth. And a lot of them are about they have like a very specific god, which is about death and rebirth. And and part of like being in the mystery cult is you're sort of like taking this this god spirit into yourself. Um, as a kind of spiritual transformation, I, I was just, I was thinking about that in, in regards to Elden Ring more from the, from the sort of Christian symbolism perspective the, with, mm. you know, America on the cross and, and all of this sort of stuff and, and like how, yeah, I guess the question of how physically there is she or like how important mm -hmm. is that element versus the her sort of i mean another thing okay I, my mind's kind of darting darting around all over but um <laughs> another thing is like um that you have this communion essentially in elden ring of like merica her erd tree which i i think is was watered by her blood because that's what mikola mm -hmm. does with his halic tree um yeah so you have her erd tree and then it's it's giving grace to everyone so like the dew and the, uh, what do you call it? The sap, right? The blessed sap of the Erd tree. Like this is what people are essentially imbibing. So like everyone is kind of taking into themselves this divine godly blood. Um, and so, yeah, maybe there is something about like America is kind of, I don't know, something more, more, what's the word? not transient, but she's not just like a person in a place, but more sort of yeah. existing on a higher spiritual level. Yeah. 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 That's... And, and it, Newman, the word Newman literally means like a spirit, a spirit residing in right, a yes. certain place. So, and her, you know, her, all of her source seals, scar seals are very much about, the more spiritual or you know kind of intellectual uh side where you know the 
Radigan's is all about the physical side, the more masculine side. And, and I've always viewed um, the, uh, the position of America and Radigan as, as far as like their relation of their arms um, as the Vitruvian man, um, which is all about yeah, squaring the right. circle or of combining course. spirit and matter. And, and masculine and feminine and those two when you're able to do those two things is basically when you become divine or you become like a you know you've become so balanced and you know it's it's kind of like every other um it's an enlightenment kind of, it's nirvana it's the, yeah, the, the ascension exactly. yeah yeah exactly yeah all, all that stuff yeah, yeah i didn't even yeah, think so, of the man of course that's that's uh, very clearly yeah. You know, it's it's funny because yeah. the the one point that I I was sort of I was more resistant to in your in in the video that I, I initially watched of yours was there's the, only one. <laughs> uh, well, the the one the major major sort of gripe that I had is oh, okay, good, is good, is good. um yeah. is uh, your sort of conception of this as being like I, I guess I don't want to I don't want to mischaracterize your the way that you you, yeah. you view it, but but uh, that like, not only is the whole, the lands between and this whole story, like metaphorically about America, but it it is, I don't know, in, a, in some way, like literally, um, to put it in simple terms, like figments of her, of her mind, let's say. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I, something about that didn't, sit right with me but actually now that yeah. you're talking about it in terms of like america being this kind of more divine entity or like something on a on a higher realm the mm -hmm. idea of like a a god dreaming up the real world mm -hmm. feels mm -hmm. feels much more in line <laughs> that, that that kind of makes <laughs> that makes it more con convincing to me so yeah yeah yeah, and I, I think yeah, it's it's. I think um, I'm pretty new to this. Like I I've just kind of gotten into the game of of trying to um, try to convey what is in my brain, <laughs> uh, in in a in a way that makes sense to people. And when you go, um, the way that I think about it, like might rub some people the wrong way, but kind of like you're saying, like, it's, it's very, like, it, they're so close to one another, like that one simple, um, kind of click, uh, of difference away, like, oh, now it makes sense. Kind of yeah. how I was saying it compared to, you know, how you might understand it. Um, it's, it's basically one and the same thing, but uh, it's, it's a, just, a, just different enough that like, it makes sense in your mind. And to me, I think like the best way that I can explain it is, um, I very much think that the things that are happening to America, um, and, and what's happening kind of in her inner world is being told to us through the outer world. Um, so to me, there's no difference in, and that they are one and the same. Um, but that kind of that kind of phrasing seems to resonate with people a little bit more that. Um, yeah, it, it's it's almost like the, the movie Inception where like whatever the architect is kind of thinking and, and feeling um, it, 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 it occurs in, in that world. Um, so like, you know, with Leonardo DiCaprio, you can't get away from from this image of his wife and it, it follows him wherever he goes. And like, it's very much his shadow, right? Like it's mm. something that he has not, he has not accepted and, and it haunts him everywhere he goes. And um, that seems to, that, that seems to kind of transcend through uh, Elden Ring where it's um, like the, the item description of Mount Gilmere says like, you know, the, the skies and, and the, the, the cliffs and stuff became more pronounced and more exaggerated and more ominous after the shattering. Um, right. And the, the map, um, the arteria leaf, you know, it literally says like you can feel a pulse in it. And like, to me that the map is alive, right? Like it's, 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 it's a living entity that 
seems to be changing and reflecting whatever the the quote unquote god of that time is going through um and and i think it also kind of harkens back into gold masks thing where it's like if you have a god like if there was a god in our world um that could change its mind and then all of a sudden change the rules and and like how things are happening <laughs> like as we're talking um you would be like well what the hell man like just make up your mind stick with one thing and and uh, to me, that's very much like gold mask. He's if if gods can change their minds and then thus change the rules and the landscape of the world, um, that's a very chaotic place to to live. So he's almost locking into place like you know America and the current ideology, and nothing can penetrate it. And it's it's going to be what it is. But um, you kind of you need order and chaos in order to grow as a person and. Uh, whether that's whether you you choose to view America as like a, a an, an, the, you know a, a deity where she is kind of like this divine person, or you know she is just a very human person, and all of our inner worlds are kind of built like this. You know when we dream, you know it's <laughs> a lot of crazy shit can happen, but that's just in your mind. Like there is no there's no um. There's no boundaries as far as as your imagination and your mind. And and I think extending that and making a video game that is a reflection of that is is such a cool undertaking because uh, things don't really need to make all that much sense. Um, and, and where you can take it is really up to your imagination. Um, and And I found that viewing it and kind of expressing it in that way seems to have resonated with with people a little bit more rather than saying like, this is all just taking place in America's head and none of it's real. It's like reframing that a little bit seems to, um, seems to sit a little bit better with people. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think there's a, there's a, at least for me, like there's a bit of resistance to um, the idea that like, well, if it's not real, then it doesn't matter. You know, it's it's something sure. along those lines. Like, it's sort of like yeah. how you watch a movie and then at the end it's like, oh, it was all a dream. Uh, if <laughs> yeah. it feels like a, you know. But I think I think if if you think of it in terms of like, no, there's something which exists on a on a higher plane of reality, and their dreaming is this world. So yeah. like the world, That's really, it, I, I it love, does I matter. The, cool. the world is, it is really happening. It is real. Um, but there's like, that's not the only level of reality, let's say, right? Like there's, yeah. and th that to me, um, makes more sense. Cause that, it, that is also something talking, going back to the point about like how Miyazaki's like kind of been developing these ideas over time. Like you start with demon souls, this idea of like, souls are what allow you to see essentially and like not just see mm -hmm. but you sort of create reality through myth um and then and then like going through to bloodborne and you have these like stacked realities and, and it's all dreams within dreams yeah. and and uh and, <laughs> yeah. and there are these higher higher beings that can see more and and so then with Elden Ring, like the idea that, yeah, well, the, the, it's like, it's like the uh, Plato's uh, cave, you know, there's the yeah, story yeah. of Plato's cave with the, the, the shadows, like you see these mm -hmm. shadows on the wall and you think that's, that's the only reality that exists, but the whole time there's these right. objects which are casting the shadows and that's the real thing. Yeah. And so. Turn around, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's this. This is um. This is really fascinating. I I I feel like I I kind of want to leave the conversation here and um sure. and let people. I I feel like this is this has been a good advertisement for your channel. I hope that people will uh, <laughs> uh will go will go check them out because it's it's really fascinating stuff. And I think you're the only person who's really taking this um as far as far as I've seen the only person who's taking this this perspective on it and. Uh, yeah. A lot of the, th the things that you've said have been um, eerily predictive and uh, very just 
I don't know, at least for me, it's like that instant, like, oh, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So that's that's really cool. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to be still experiencing that like two years, <laughs> two years down the line. So yeah, um, yeah. But this has been this has been really fun, and so for anyone listening, um, there will be uh, links in the description to Center Tarnish channel and um, uh, anything else that that you might want to plug there. So um, check them out, and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this conversation. So thanks for being here, man. Yeah, yeah thanks thanks for having me. And, and uh, I, I would say before you venture onto my channel, just um, go in with it with the with the. Um, very open mind because I think um, <laughs> like like this conversation is yeah kind of a prelude to it where it's uh, it's it takes it, it takes it in a different direction um, and I, I think if you're kind of willing to to sit with it and and um, think about it and kind of uh, um, don't let maybe the 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 quote unquote facts of the game and and that's probably a terrible thing to say but like. Uh, inundate you inundate you with with um the the story being told so um yeah super happy to to be on here and, and express it and have a long form you know conversation about it because it's uh it, it's a lot and this is just the the tip of the iceberg so i appreciate it yeah this is awesome man glad we did this yeah all right yeah me too. nice to meet you man <laughs>